Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, now we are going to get into... The Mr. and Mrs. Blanding series proper. And we're going to start with the audition program. The audition date is November the 8th, 1950, and the title is The New Freeway. Presenting Mr. Cary Grant and Miss Betsy Drake as Mr. and Mrs. Blandings in a new series based on Eric Hodgins' best selling novels, Mr. Blandings Builds His Dream House and Blanding's Way. Ladies and gentlemen, Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Susan? Yes, Joan? Are you much older than I am? Three years. I'll be nine and you'll be six. Why? Do you understand, Daddy? Uh Uh-uh. How old do you have to get before you understand your parents? (laughs) Depends on your parents. I guess maybe it'll be a long time with us. Those were the Blanding's children, Susan and Joan. I've met Jim and Muriel Blandings, and somehow I kind of agree with the kids. Why? I don't know that I can explain it. Wouldn't it be better if I just introduced them to you? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cary Grant and Miss Betsy Drake as Mr. and Mrs. Blandings, with Gail Gordon as Bill Cole. Muriel? In here, Jim. Hello, darling. I'm starved. What's for dinner? Wait a minute, I'm just finishing mending your last sock. Don't touch that chair, Jim. Fresh paint. Oh. How did it get there? I'm painting it. Oh, nothing like hand-painted socks. <laughs> uh, what's that burning smell? Just the iron. I'm pressing my dress. Mm-hmm. Would you mind telling me which one you're doing at the moment? All of them. Oh. And are we going to have dinner, too? Sure. Don't we always? Oh, I don't know how you're doing. What are we going to have? Let's see. Uh, lamb chops. Oh, lamb, of course. How could I have forgotten that? Did you forget the lamb? No, dear, don't be so silly. Lamb was here this morning. Oh, he was? He's always here on Tuesdays, you know that. Hmm. Muriel, look, all I wanted to know is what are we going to have for dinner? That's what we're having, lamb. I don't understand how you can spend every day being one of the cleverest advertising men in the business and get so confused when you come home. No, 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 no. I'm not a bit confused. No, it's all perfectly clear. It is now, it is now seven o'clock at night. I have come home from what is known as a hard day at the office to my lovely new house in the country and to my charming wife. She has painted her nose and chin with green paint and had enough left over for a chair while sewing my last sock on her freshly pressed dress. Now, how can you say I'm confused? Did I? No. No, no, I'll get it. Hello? What are you doing there? I live here. I know. Don't you ever work? (laughs) My dear Bill, you, I am told, are an excellent lawyer. On that assumption, I retained you. You are also a bachelor. You have strange and unaccountable habits, undoubtedly for that reason. Now, I will thank you to mind your own business and let me live my own life. I will be glad to do the same for you. If you only would. Is Muriel home? Muriel is home. Thank you. May I speak to her? Why? You want reasons? Sit down, my dear boy. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, here it comes. Here Not that chair, Jim. Uh, oh, number one, she's yes, very pretty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Number two, she has a very musical voice. Number three... Yeah. What do you want to talk to her about? Well, to start with, numbers one, two, and three. Hmm. Also, if I must tell you, she had a meeting this morning with a man I sent out there. A Mr. Sheepshead. Sheepshead? Hmm? Sheepshead. Sheeps. Chops. Lamb chops. Lamb? Oh, 
brother. Muriel! Huh? Bill Cole's on the phone. Mm-hmm. Muriel, was Mr. Lamb's name by any chance Sheep's Head? Mm-hmm. That's what I said, Sheep's Head. Oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> well, what about Mr. Sheep's Head, Bill? I want Muriel to go out with him. You what? Jim, just deliver the message. Tell Muriel I want her to go out with him. Goodbye. But... Now, now, who is Mr. Sheepshead? He's the man from the laundry. Well, what's the matter? Did the laundry burn a hole in the sheet? Shirt. Shirt? Mine? Six of yours, two of the kids. Oh, I came up with a good average. Now, what does Bill mean, you, you're going out with him? I guess I'll have to go out with him. Look, is this the modern lawyer's method for getting a claim paid off? You'll do nothing of the sort. Bill says. Bill says, Bill says. I don't care what Bill says. And Bill says that you may have to go out with him, too. Muriel! (laughs) And I think you should stay home tomorrow morning and we'll both go out and get it over with. Out? Out where? To the cleaning plant to settle our claim. Where did you think I meant? Oh, I didn't. I didn't think. That's my trouble. I just don't think... (laughs) Oh, you've probably had a rough day. Relax. Notice anything different? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About you? Not necessarily, but that'd be nice, too. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, when Bill called off the phone, it seems calm. Unbelievable. Be quiet. Ah, quiet. Where are the kids? Over at the Williamses. For the night? Yes. They had a weenie roast, and I told them they could stay. Mm -hmm. I suppose you've got a date to play canasta with somebody. No. There's only one person I want to date with tonight. And that's you. That's just the date you've got. Good. I wanted to find out if we've still got things to talk about. Outside of contractors and taxes and prices and architects and bills. Oh, it's been such a long time, Jim. Mm, Too darn long. Anyway, we built the house. The roof hasn't fallen in yet. Most of the doors seem to be hanging on to their moorings, even if they do open the wrong way. (laughs) And there are at least four windows we can get open and shut. If you'll untangle yourself from that chair and walk into the study, you'll find a fire burning, a shaker full of martinis, all made, soft Mm -hmm. light. And Brahms, I think. With thou beside me. What about the lamb chops? Oh, don't be on romantic. <laughs> no, wait, that's not Brahms. Oh, really? No. Come on. All right. Hmm. This is what we dreamed about, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mr. Blanding's really built a dream house. Yeah, and he's living in it. You know, with the kids gone, it uh, gives me a honeymoon feeling. <clears throat> and I like that. <laughs> yes, I do. So do I. It's an awful thing to say, I know, but somehow it's wonderful to have just a moment now and then when we're really alone. Well, it's not wasted. Here. <laughs> Hold your glass. Thanks. To the Blandings. To the Blandings. Especially you. Especially you. Yeah. Come on, sit here. No, no, no. A little closer. Jim. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Comfortable? Completely. But, um... I'm a little embarrassed. Embarrassed? Muriel, look at me. My name's Blandings, Jim Blandings. Quite respectable, quite married. I know, Jim, but it's been so long since we've really been alone. I can't help it. It just seems illicit. Hmm. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> ah, yeah. Spend your weekends at Blandings, 45 minutes from Times Square. Luxurious, quiet, cuisine doubtful. License numbers taken down inaccurately. Discretion or watchword. (laughs) You know, even after ten years, I still like what I see when I look at you. Uh, You look exactly as you did at Bryn Mawr when I first kidnapped you and first took off your cap and gown. Jim. Figuratively, of course. It wasn't so (laughs) figuratively. You certainly tried. Well, how was I to know you were going to trap me into falling in love with you? It wasn't in your mind at the time, was Uh, it? My mind was a little crowded with another idea. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Martini? That's just what you said then. Yes, please. Uh, That's not what you said. I don't think they even taught you the word at that school. Yes, sir, please. Oh, you said please often enough, but I never once heard the word yes until the the night we were married. (laughs) I didn't say yes. I said I do. I don't mean then. (laughs) Oh, you know, there's been something on my mind. Now, let me see. I've been meaning to tell you. What? I love you. I love you, too. Well, uh, come here. I'd like to discuss that matter at length. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Uh, 
No, Wally, excuse me, sweet. Hello? Hello, Jim. Goodbye, Bill. <laughs> ah, Muriel. Oh, Muriel. Yes, Jim. Where'd you go? Chops. Oh, yeah, Chops. Nice place. <laughs> well, come here. With your permission, may I introduce you to a modern miracle? I have here a telephone cord. How do you do, telephone cord? Now, if you'll permit your eye to follow the cord, you will see that it's inserted into the wall by means of a plug. Thank you, Professor. A plug. How fascinating. With one deft twist of my wrist, I pull the plug, sever the connection, and presto, we're alone in the world. Jim, you can't do that. I did it, and I'm glad. But the children, what if somebody wants you? Well, the kids are safe for the Williamses, and I don't care about somebody. This night is for us. Eleven o'clock. Yeah. I'm happy. So am I. Are we not wonderful, huh? Yes, we are. Oh, isn't it a lovely house when it's quiet? Heaven. Full of peace. <laughs> Muriel. Muriel, what, what the devil's all that? Jim, you've been fooling with the wiring again. Who, me? Yes, you. Well, I, I certainly wasn't going to pay those outrageous prices just for fixing a simple little wire break. So you fixed it? Yeah, before I left this morning. There was nothing to it. Naturally, except now the coffee's percolating, the washing machine's going, the mix master's mixing, and this is the longest short circuit I ever heard. Oh, wait a minute, Muriel. I can't hear. Wait till I pull this plug. Isn't that amazing? Now, why would they do all that? Because somebody rang the doorbell. But it didn't ring. That's right. Go to the door. Well, why would I go to the door? I'll show you. Look, I'll turn on the hall light. <laughs> oh, 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 I'll go to the door. <clears throat> Hi. Did I wake you up? I'm sorry to spoil your fun, but no. Well, don't just stand there. Let me in. I don't want to let you in. Bill, listen. You're a nice guy, you're a fair lawyer, and you're an old friend. But don't work overtime on me. I don't want to see you tonight. I don't want to see you. Is Muriel home? And Muriel doesn't want to see you either. <laughs> well, I'll ask her. Muriel! Oh, Bill, come on in. Oh, what are you what doing way out here this time of night? <laughs> well, if your husband had more sense, he might have asked that, too. Mm -hmm. Also, if he had more sense, I might not have to be here. Mm -hmm. Would you mind telling me, Mr. Blandings, why you don't pay your phone bill? What do you mean? I know what he means. I mean that I've been trying to get this house for the last three hours, and all I could find out was that your phone was disconnected. Now do you know what he means? Uh, now, what do you want, Bill? Well, you've been through quite a lot of grief building this house. It was worth it. I hope so. But I felt you ought to know that there are some new ideas floating around about redecorating it. Redecorating our house? <laughs> Bill, look, that doesn't come under the heading of legal advice. Now, if you don't like the way this house looks, don't look at it. Well, they're not my ideas. Well, I don't care whose ideas they are. Because it's nobody's business but ours. And the state legislature. The state what, what? They had a meeting this afternoon with a map of this whole county in front of them. So? So I got a call at 8 o'clock at home. It seems they've condemned a pretty good hunk of your land. But they can't do that, Bill. Look yeah, how we've yeah, improved it. Ju just a minute, Bill. Now, Bill, listen to me. I started out three years ago to build myself a little dream house. Oh, a dream house. Uh, yes, dear. I worked hard. I saved my money. I, we saved our uh, money. Yes, yes, dear. I, I thought I could afford it. Now, two years ago, my money was gone. No house. But last Monday, I had a house. We had a house. Uh, I'm in hock up to my ears. That's right, dear. You're in hock up to your ears. <laughs> now, listen, Bill. I've got my house, and I'm going to live in it with or without the state legislature. Politics may make strange bedfellows, but I'm happy with things as they are. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> they're not going to improve me into the gutter. Uh, maybe not. But how do you think a white line is going to look right through the middle of this living room? Huh? Because this is the exact path of the new state highway. Got Anyone want to give talk. me a drink? <laughs> Now, 
now the second act of Mr. and Mrs. Blandings, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. If you were to look through the window of the Blandings house, you'd see a tableau. Two Blandings, Jim and Muriel, standing frozen, looking with the deepest horror into the smiling and completely composed face of their lawyer and best friend, Bill Cole. What do you mean they're going to build a road right through the house? Now, don't shout, Jim. But, Bill, what do you mean? Uh, look. <laughs> look, kids, I'm thirsty. What about that drink? Drink nothing. You walk in here grinning like a Cheshire cat in the middle of the night, tell me to move out in the street, and you want a drink. Not, not so loud, Jim. You'll wake up the kids. They aren't here. Now, calm down, Jim. After all, Bill can't help it. We're lucky he had friends who call him from the state capitol. Thank you, Muriel. Will you also tell him that from now on he should always talk to me before he does something? You mean Jim should talk to you before he does something. Oh, uh, thank you, Muriel. Oh, now, 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 look, Bill. You handled my entire purchase of this property. You handled all the horrible details of the financial butchery that turned out to be this house. You wrote all the correspondence. Ah, hold it. For what? Correspondence. Ever see this letter? I didn't write it. Let me see. Here, I'll take it. No, no, you won't. I'll read it to you. It's addressed to the County Road Commission. Does that ring a bell? No, no, it doesn't. If it did, it would start the washing machine. <laughs> now, listen, listen to the letter. Gentlemen, I am about to take occupancy in my new home. I have put a considerable amount of money into the development of my property, and I feel that in all fairness, the county should contribute its share of the taxes I pay to make the community livable and comfortable. I wish to report that I have spent upwards of $100 for the repair of broken springs and shock absorbers in my car because of the deplorable condition of the only road which goes to my property. May I hope that you will take up the matter of a new road at the earliest possible moment? Uh-oh. Now do you remember the letter? No, I don't. You're making it up. Oh, sure. Do uh, you remember it, Muriel? Me? Remember what? The letter I just read. I'm sorry, Bill. Guess I wasn't listening. Not listening? Muriel, don't you realize the spot we're in? They're building a road right through the middle of our living room. I know. I was trying to figure out how we can get out of it. Well, let me see that letter. Here. This letter never came from me or from my office. Besides that, I never spent a quarter on my car because I never broke anything. Are you sure you didn't write it? Positive. Besides, my secretary always puts her initials on every letter, and that, that letter was written on the worst typewriter in the world. Look at it. Half the keys are broken. Uh, broken keys. Muriel. Yes, Jim? Muriel, where is my old typewriter? Which one? I only had one. Well, that's funny. I thought you had lots of typewriters. <laughs> Do you know where it is? Where it is? Yes, dear. That's what I said. Well, let's see. Your fishing stuff is in the attic, your ski stuff is goes. in the garage, your golf stuff minute. is in the coat closet. Mm. Now, what was it you wanted? Did, did you write the letter, Muriel? Yes, I did. Mm. You didn't ask Bill before you did it, did you? Well, it wasn't my car that was busted up. Our car. Uh, our car, your car. It was a couple of kids from the village who were helping me get settled and they couldn't afford to have it fixed and the road was terrible. We pay taxes to everybody and his brother. Somebody told me about the county road commission. Gee whiz, why the devil shouldn't I? Would somebody please get me a drink? <laughs> Us, not you. Not a big one, Jim. You know what happens to your stomach if you drink when you're excited. Muriel? Yes, Jim? Now you just sit still in that chair and don't... <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, you said stay. What? <laughs> I couldn't have stayed still. Now, now look. Now, now listen. Do, do not, under any circumstances, give me any advice. Now, for the next few minutes, if you breathe at all, do it quietly. Or maybe... Uh, Jim. Okay, scotch. Scotch. All right. I uh, think there's a way out, you know. What's the way out, Bill? Blue blades? <laughs> no, no, no. You see, sometimes politics are mixed up in these things. Somebody's got a hunk of land someplace that will double in value if a state highway goes past it all of a sudden. Sometimes they'll lay out funny routes to make that happen. Why, the high binders, the thieving uh, grafters... Uh, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. The most important thing to you two is to live in this house. Don't be sending the governor to jail until you're sure you've got a roof over your heads. Now, I'm getting out of here. 
You wanted to be alone, so you're going to be alone. And in the morning, take this petition which I drew up for you and we'll charge you for later and have every neighbor within 50 miles sign it. And when am I supposed to go to my office? Jim, did you write the letter? No. No, I didn't. You can get up now, Muriel. You're going to need your sleep. You've got a long drive in the morning. <laughs> go to bed, my sweet. I'll go. And you can cook your own lamb chops. Good night. Good night, Muriel. Sorry I had to switch teams in midstream. And you can go stew, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, better not rush, Bill. We, we ought to talk this thing over a little more. Okay, okay. I can stay a minute. Just long enough to have one for the road. Oh, easy, chum. I think maybe that's an expression I'll never use again. Sorry. Now, uh, I'll just tell you one thing. You're my lawyer. It's up to you to get me out of this. They can't do this to me. Off that line, will you, bud? What line? What are you doing here? Hey, Mac, tell Hyman there to get out of the way, will you? You're on the line, mister. Move off it. But this, this is private property, my property. This is my house. Who are you, anyway? State surveyors, mister. Are you Blandings? Yes, I am. <laughs> You'll be able to open up a nice hot dog stand here. <laughs> You know, this will be very desirable commercial property. Commercial? I live here. Can you hear me? I live here. I... I live here. <laughs> okay, Bill? Yeah, okay. Daddy. What is it, Susan? I knew you wouldn't break your word. Daddy wouldn't break his word. Uh, of course not, kids. Uh, what word? About the swimming pool. Swimming pool? And now you're going to teach me to swim, aren't you? You always said that when we moved out to the country, someday we'd have a swimming pool. Yes, but... And the man said so. What man? The man you were yelling at. Uh, just what did the man say? And where's your mother? Out. The man said that after they looked through the sticks, they were going to bring out big shovels and dig and dig and dig. Till they found water. And then we'd have a swimming pool. <laughs> uh, where's your mother? Out. Well, look, Susan, do you know who phoned my office and left word for me to come out here at once? Uh-huh. We know. Well, who? Guess. You can have three guesses. Oh, now, come on. This is no time for games. Who was it? Uncle Bill. Well, where was he? He went. Where? Back to work, he said. He said there was no use sending a boy to do a man's work. Oh. He'd have to go himself as soon as he got you out of the way. Oh, he did, did he? Well, we'll see about that. Where's your mother? Out. <laughs> But well, where is she? In the car. Selling papers. She told us to watch the house. Us and Jeanette. So Jeanette's watching the inside and we're watching the outside. And the men came and it was very interesting to watch. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm going in the telephone. Now, you keep on watching and let me know if anything else interesting happens. I haven't said swimming pool, lawyer, Bill Cole, selling papers. Bill Cole, selling papers, that's not a bad idea. Hello, operator. Get me Mr. William Cole at Whiteside 64893, please. That's right. This is 431 Ring 2. Thank you. Jeanette? Yes, sir? Bring me some ice, will you, please? Well, it's only 4 o'clock, Mr. Blandy. I didn't ask you the time, Jeanette. Just get me some ice. <laughs> For your head? Uh, look, look, you. I thought you said everything was going to be all right. Everything is all right, Mr. No. Blanding. I just thought it was too early. No, that not far. you, Jeanette. Everything oh. is all right, Jim. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. The place is up to his neck in surveyors. They've got a tractor loaded with tools. They're dumping stuff all over the lot, and you say don't worry. Well, things like this take time, Jim. Where's Muriel? You'll talk to me and like it. Now, what am I supposed to do now? Well, as long as you've got some ice there, I suppose the best thing to do is have a drink. Oh. I want to get these guys off my property. Well, I'm doing everything I can. But when can you get this stopped? Well, I'm not sure. Sometimes these things take months. Months? Why, this place will be a prairie in a week. <laughs> well, there's one consolation anyway. What? They have to pay you for the land. Uh, they do? Oh, yes. How much? Oh, that's up to them. <laughs> Are you? 
here. <clears throat> How do you like your front lawn? Crowded, isn't it? How many signers did you get for the petition? None. None? You're kidding, aren't you? No. I drove 112 miles, and everybody else in his county wants the darn road. Oh. I've got to call Bill and tell him. Oh, I just talked to him. That's just like talking to yourself. Different here. He talks to me. I don't fight with him. I know, and he doesn't fight with you. That's <laughs> right. Do you know, Jim, the kids are right? About what? The swimming pool. If Bill can call off the road deal, we'll have the whole excavation dug for a pool and all at the expense of oh. the state. Very shrewd. M- Muriel, have you ever inquired about the cost of a swimming pool 75 yards long by 60 feet wide? <laughs> no, but it sounds like a good-sized one. Oh, uh, it's not bad. <laughs> you could hold the Poughkeepsie regatta in it and still have room to launch the Queen Mary. <laughs> It's not such a good idea, then, is it? Well, not the best, no. Jim, I'm sorry about that letter. Yeah. All right, forget it, Muriel. You were just trying to do something nice for somebody, and yes, it backfired. I, I know. Well, nobody can shoot you for that. Although, for a few minutes, I... Oh. All right, I'll get it. Hello? Jim, everything's going to be all right. It is? Really? Yep, it's all set. Wonderful. How did you do it? Oh, I haven't done it. Not yet, anyway. Well, well, what are you talking about, then? I've arranged a meeting at the state capitol. We'll thrash the whole thing out and get it settled. Great. When's the meeting? Two months from Thursday. I'll call you later. That was a perfect dinner, Muriel. Almost made me forget my troubles. Well, Jeanette seemed to sense that we needed to be well-fed tonight. (laughs) More coffee? Yeah, just half a cup. Bill called while you were taking a shower. He did? Mm -hmm. I suppose you saved that bad news until I'd been fed. It's not bad news, but I saved it anyway. I wanted you to eat a good dinner. (laughs) Oh, I did that. What did he say? He's managed to get some sort of a thing until that meeting he's arranged. Uh, Some sort of a thing? Yes, can't remember the name of it. Well, think, Muriel. Now, see if you can't remember. This is important. I'll try. Oh, never mind. I'll call Bill myself. He's on the train for Washington. Oh, that's good. Would there be anything about a girdle? <laughs> girdle? In the state legislature? Mm. Corset, maybe? Oh, for... oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll get it. I'll Isn't get it. Isn't it funny? I can't yeah, think of mind. it. Never mind. No, just relax. I'll get it. No. <clears throat> girdle. Corset. Corset? Are you trying to tell me that Bill managed to get a stay? That's it. That's no. it. You're absolutely wrong. <laughs> Driven in my own head. So you mean we're safe until the meeting? Yes, hmm. and Bill says he's positive he'll win. There's only one thing. Oh, no. Well, Bill says... Bill says, Bill says... That in looking over all our papers... Yes? He found a little tiny flaw in our title. Here again are Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Come on, Jim. Where? To the laundry. We've got a date with Mr. Lamb. Sheep's head. No, he lives in Pawtucket. Nice town. Lamb? Uh, no, thanks. I'll just have a hamburger. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Betsy Drake can currently be seen starring in the Warner Brothers comedy Pretty Baby. Tonight's program was written and directed by Nat Wolfe. Susan Blandings was played by Ann Whitfield, and Joan Blandings was Patricia Ainone. Other members of the cast were Gail Bonney, Herb Igren, and Jack Crucian. Music was composed and conducted by Bernard Katz. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, this has some rough material. Despite there being a certain realism to all of the problems being worked 
out off screen by the lawyer, it's not necessarily dramatically or comedically satisfying. And the episode takes a while to get going just because of all of the expositional dialogue to let listeners who never saw the film or who uh, have forgotten the plot. And the film was released two and a half years previously, so I don't think that's an invalid concern, but you could have been a little more artful in setting up the premise other than having Jim explain the plots of the book slash movie. Also, I have to say that pulling the phone out of the wall is such a dramatic move. You know, it's pure Hollywood. I can buy it like if your criminal's holding someone hostage and you don't want them to call out. But for something like this, it really is easier just to take the receiver off the hook. I mean, you're going to have to call in somebody to fix it when you pull it out of the wall like that. Though, to be fair to Jim, there was no reason to think that the phone had been disconnected or anything else had happened other than Jim not wanting to take phone calls right now. So Bill continually calling and then driving out there is a bit silly and overdramatic, particularly since there was not a ton that could be done anyway about the whole issue. The role of Muriel's letter in causing the whole construction project was a bit overstated. Given that all the other neighbors wanted the road to come through, that suggested that she was not giving the government any new information. I know there can be a tendency when you are moving somewhere and you discover something about that area, a problem that needs addressed, that you are discovering something really new and novel. And local residents, if they were sarcastic, would be like, Really? The roads are bad? I'd wondered why I have to get my shocks replaced every year. The truth is that people have been raising a stink about this for quite a while, and Muriel's letter was just part of a record, and you can imagine this sort of thing taking years or even decades of lobbying and people saying there needs to be something done before it got to that point. Despite some of the problems in the script, I enjoyed the program overall. I think that Cary Grant is fun to listen to, you know, one of the all-time great Hollywood stars. And that power really does come through radio. And Betsy Drake is great. And then to top it all off, you get Gail Gordon attached to the project. Baby Boomer's remember Gail Gordon for playing these sort of stodgy authority figures. Osgood Conklin on Armis Brooks. The second Mr. Wilson on Dennis the Menace. And then a bunch of bosses and authority figures to Lucille Ball characters in various sitcoms. But he was far more versatile and talented in that in both a comedic and dramatic uh, sense. And you really get to see that here. As he plays this really sardonic friend of the family and lawyer and just nails the role with some really funny lines. I did like the part where he was talking about the good side of this being that Jim would be paid for the land and Jim asked, how much, Ed was told it would be what the government decided. Now, technically, the government's supposed to pay fair market value, but pretty much that's right, but I think the delivery was really superb on that. So, while the series has got a bit of a rough audition, I think that uh, there's really some really strong points in it, and I look forward to hearing what's ahead. Now, I would also add in an additional fact I found out is how close to real life the story of Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House was. And it was actually pretty close to on the mark because the writer of the Blanding's books, Eric Hodgkins, actually went 
five times over his budget in building his dream house. It cost $2.2 million in today's funds back towards the tail end of the 1930s, and he had to sell it in two years. However, writing the book, which I have to imagine was a bit of a cathartic experience, got him back on track, and then he was given a $200,000 payment for the rights to the film, which was more than he'd spent on the house, and he tried to buy the house back, but he couldn't. However, he did write a sequel book, which they referenced here, uh, Blanding's Way. And these, again, are based on the two years that he lived in Connecticut. Blanding's Way was referenced at the start of the episode as something that's a basis of the series. And I've not read it, so I'm curious, though, to what degree Blanding's Way, which is said to be a somewhat darker book, but still funny, influences this radio series as we go through it. All right, well, that will do it for today. If you do have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.